have no idea what loss is. We have a job to do. And God help any motherfuckers who stand in our way. Welcome back to the Sons of Milnir. As always, I am one of your hosts, Fat Thor. I'm Gorgon. And today we are going to be talking all about The Last of Us. And this is going to be including the video game, the new TV show that just ended, I want to say, maybe two, three weeks ago now. I think two. Yeah. yeah, two weeks ago. But it's been taking the world absolutely by storm. It, I think it's the highest watched uh, show on HBO Max maybe ever. But I do know that it just beat out House of the Dragon for uh, viewership, which is huge. It's crazy impressive. I mean, it's it's impossible to to not notice how big the Game of Thrones fandom has gotten, you know, being an IP that, that came from books mm-hmm. to being on TV. Uh, and, and, and in a similar vein, we're seeing that with this, right? It's mm-hmm. it's an IP that started elsewhere before it came to TV. And it's uh, I, I think people these days really love uh, adaptations. And yeah. and I, I definitely think this is proof that that adaptations from from other media being the foundation for what we see on television hasn't burned out in hype that that's not a trend that's dying off anytime soon yeah absolutely not and i wouldn't even i mean definitely adaptations but i would even just say it's just people love good stories you know and i think a lot of people especially i'm not even just going to say video games but like game of thrones is a great example like people who don't read the books or you know have played the video games maybe uh dismiss this kind of stuff because they're like oh well i don't i don't like video games so like that's not for me but you know this proves and so does game of thrones like it doesn't matter what the medium is like these stories are great and the way that they're able to take these stories and make them into a new media for new fans is just awesome and like you said it's just crazy that something like the last of us which is a video game started off as a video game surpassed house of the dragon i mean game of thrones was the biggest show of like pretty much ever so yeah like i said it's literally taking everyone by storm so we wanted to come and nerd out all about it talk a little bit about the video game both me and gorgon are huge fans of the game so, I mean, let's just jump right into it. Let's start off talking about the game, The Last of Us. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, we were kind of talking b- before we started this just about, you know, where we were when when it came out, because The Last of Us really did change the gaming community, right? It's, oh, yeah. it's the storytelling it had for a zombie game. And with the twist it put on the zombie genre, right, really, really took the gaming community by storm. Um, I, I very much infectiously how the show is now. Yeah, right? literally. Infectiously, you see what I did there. <laughs> Ooh, um, dude, yeah, it I, but it but it did, you know. And and I was in college when it when it happened. I was sick, and my roommate was as well. Um, at launch, so mm. so he bought The Last of Us, and so we stayed. You know, we were kind of self quarantined and isolated because we both had the flu, and and so we were inside with the flu playing the last of us as it came out and i remember i'd watch him play he'd watch me play right we go back and forth on it and uh it's uh it it was funny to me because like what i would see right and and i get that empathy and that emotion watching him play it didn't lose that wonder when i played it for myself right even though it was mm-hmm. just days apart his play through my play through right it it uh yeah it's it's such a good story i neil Druckmann's a master of storytelling mm-hmm. um that's the gentleman who helped write the game and and he's also um, one of the lead writers for the show um yeah. and i think that kind of goes back to you know you were just talking we were just talking about the success of it uh right in in the same vein that game of thrones is is a massive success right like their mm-hmm. their writer george R. R. martin helped right make sure it translated properly why we talked about this on our last episode with with cyberpunk and part of what made ed runners so successful we thought was that that the lead writer for the show is somebody who comes from right also writing the comics is, mm-hmm. is involved in like you know cross-production stuff with it from the game to it right yeah. uh, kind of in the same vein with invincible uh with robert kirkman you know directly writing the comics and then helping write the show it's a you that that masterclass storytelling translates and world building and feel translates when you have the same people involved. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's really the kind of people want to say like secret ingredient of, you know, making these transitions to different medium is 
having someone there that knows the material and and or respects the material and can really it because it's not about just making like game of thrones again to use as an example it's not about making the books into a tv show necessarily it's like taking what those books are about and translating that into a visual medium and like same thing with the video game it's not about making every single level of the video game like an episode of the tv show it's about what is this video game about like what is this telling the audience and how can we make that into a visual medium and still have that same emotional impact on our viewers as opposed to players in this instance so no, yeah absolutely. Like I, think said, I think part of it goes that goes to the cast mm-hmm. right we, we got the right people to 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 play the roles oh you know? yeah mm-hmm. I, I i would have never thought of pedro pascal for joel but oh, but dude. then he was announced for it and it was kind of like yo what right mm-hmm. and, and then bella ramsey got 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 cast and we were all kind of like yo what lady mm. mormont again dude game of game of thrones and last of us are linked dude we're there's so uh, many connections here we're making just on this episode it's uh it, it it really i i think they've done great i i like their chemistry i you know it's a it's a different joel and ellie than than we got in the game right i uh a little bit but mm-hmm. i in, in some ways they are so perfect yeah i mean they are absolutely perfect and we'll get into more of that in a little bit i want to you know, take a deep deep dive with pedro and bella but i do want to kind of get back to the game a little bit and uh just kind of discuss again uh the the impact that the game kind of had and like you were saying it really was a kind of moment in video game fandom i guess you could say like don't get me wrong there were definitely uh, very story driven games before the last of us but i feel at least in my opinion it really feels like the last of us was the first game to be like oh shit like we can really tell like a true story with these video games you know what i mean like how you would in a book or a movie and like playing the game it literally feels like you're watching a movie but you're in it you know what i mean and it really like i said was kind of like a landmark in i think uh storytelling in video games and like you said neil Druckmann is just he's just a master at storytelling like the story that he lays out in the video game is just so good and it's a perfect one to translate into tv like if there were ever a game to be made into a tv show i think the last of us is probably one of the best ones you could pick as far as zombie video games go, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right, um, absolutely. Yeah, and for all my Xbox people out there that haven't played the game, I'm so sorry, but you got it. Maybe it's on PC now these days, but I'm it telling is. you, YouTube videos doesn't do it justice. Like, the experience of playing that game is something that if you're a gamer, like, it's one of those things you'll remember. You know, like, I think if you play video games, everyone has those games that you remember playing for the first time and all that stuff. And last of us is definitely one of those games. And it's funny because my experience with the game came very late. Like I didn't jump on the bandwagon immediately at launch. Right. I like, I heard about it. Everyone raved about it, but it was just something that I just didn't get. I don't know. I don't have an explanation of why I just didn't get to it. And what makes it even funnier about that is, I actually played a demo of The Last of Us, like, I want to say a year or maybe even two years before it ever even came out. I was at, uh, it's called Wizard World, I'm pretty sure, in Chicago. It's like a Comic-Con sort of thing. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years old, or I, I was pretty young. But they had like a booth for Naughty Dog. And they had the it was the very first level of the game. So for anyone who's played the game, it's where uh, Sarah, Joel's daughter, wakes up in the middle of the night and she kind of like goes through the house. It's like when the infection first starts. And I played that first little mission in this little booth thing. And I was like, wow, that was really cool. Like, that was awesome. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's called The Last of Us. And then it just like left my brain. And then like two, three years later, the game comes out and I'm like, oh shit, that's that game that me and my dad played at, you know, whatever. And again, I just, I I don't know why I just didn't hop on the bandwagon. But when I did eventually maybe want to say like two, three years after the game came out, I 
jumped into it. And like I said, it's, it's as good as everyone says. It's one of those things where I went into it being like, yeah, everyone raves about this, but you know, it, it'll probably be good. And like, I even knew uh, like spoilers and all that stuff. Like I basically knew the story at that point too, but well, yeah, we, we live in nerd world. We, we can't escape spoilers. Exactly. But it, that didn't matter though. Like that's how good the story and the game is. Like, even though I knew what was going on, I, when I played it that first time, I was fully invested and I felt every emotion that you're supposed to feel. Like I said, even though I knew what was going to happen, it still hits on every level. I'm glad you dug that. I'm, I'm kind of like one jealous that, that you got to play, you know, a demo of it. I, yeah. because I, I, you know, back when I PC gamed in college, I, I used to alpha and beta test a lot for things. And, mm -hmm. and that was one that like, I was like, man, I wish I could have gotten in on that. Yeah. Um, and and two, I'm upset with you, and I'm never gonna uh, ever let you live down the fact that you got to play a demo of it two years early, and then upon release, just fumbled the bag. Dude, uh, I, hey, blame ten year old uh, Fat Thor because I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I, was just, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that was cool. And like my dad, he's ve like, I'm into zombie stuff for sure, like zombie games and everything. Right. But he really likes zombie games like that's like he he's really into that stuff. So he I remember he was really excited about it. And he was like, oh, this looks so cool. And I don't think he even like because he's playing it now, like with the show and stuff. And he's never he never finished it. And I'm like, Dad, what the hell, man? Like we're both in the it. same boat. And he he took even longer than I did. And he's an avid gamer, too. So that's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, the video game is amazing anyone out there who hasn't played the game even if if you've watched the show and again you're thinking like oh well i already know what happens play the game it's so good the there's game. a reason why it has won like every single award imaginable for video games but yeah it's just it's so good it is and and the show did did you know i i, I think it goes back to having neil there right and mm -hmm. and we were talking about the success of adaptations even with changes yeah. right it, it, it they made a few changes from from the game to the show mm -hmm. uh, and and i feel like they've been pretty well received oh yeah i mean in my opinion like you we, i don't know if you said this when we started recording or if we were talking about this before we hit record but uh mm -hmm. the fact again like having neil be involved with it to me anything in the show like that's not a change that's just a further look at what we didn't see in the game you get what i mean like, yeah, it's fair. It's just like an addition to the lore. Yeah, it's like he created everything. So it's like what he says goes. If he tells me that, you know, the cordyceps can, I don't know, tell when I can freaking fart or something, then he okay, Neil, you know, whatever you say. He, you know, who <laughs> am I to tell him any different? You get what I mean? Fair enough. But yeah, uh, that kind of just kind of leads us in, though, perfectly to the show, though. So like you just said, it the show really does an amazing job with adapting the game but also making changes where changes needed to be made in order to make it a tv show i think we kind of touched on this like last time right when when we were talking about with cyberpunk right and and the differences and as it translates mediums right i there's there's a uh, there's things you can tell in a different medium that you can't always get away with in another right i and in different mm -hmm. depths to storytelling i it's a uh, it's like take take the new characters that we got right it what was episode three we were talking about earlier right yes yeah with uh yeah. bill and frank yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. right right they weren't in the game and and in games despite how how big you do the storytelling it's something mm -hmm. like that it it you can have super impactful side characters in a video game right that really tug at your heartstrings and, and pull you deep and you get invested in their story right right mm -hmm. we see this in 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 borderlands we we've seen it in in ghost of tsushima right with some of the side characters you you see it in all kinds of different games mm -hmm. right i but i feel like it would have been a shame to to almost have them in the game and then end up just being a side character we got attached to well, because I will... in, in the show for for me mm -hmm. it it almost it made them feel more important. Right? Oh, absolutely. It was because of the episodic format. It put a whole episode about them. Mm -hmm. Right. And, I, and it I will made say, them feel so much more impactful for me for, for the story. Yeah, absolutely. I don't mean to 
disprove your point. It's a very, I, I love that, but I will say uh, Bill and Frank are in the game, but they are in the game in a very, very different capacity. So it is very easy to kind of overlook them in the game. But uh, so in the game, Bill and Fr- so we are introduced to Bill in the game. We don't see Frank. The so uh, kind of back it up a little bit. So in the game, uh, we meet Bill, who's like a doomsday prepper, very much like he is in the show. Right. But so where the big difference comes in is uh, Bill and Frank. Uh, Frank's no longer with Bill, so they have a big falling out, and Frank leaves. And so when in the game, when Joel and Ellie meet up with Bill, he's by himself, and basically right. you meet up with him just to kind of get supplies and whatnot but if you go through the story you can pick up uh there's like notes laying around like as you explore Mm -hmm. and if you follow the storyline with bill uh you find out you find frank but uh frank is dead and what happened was so again they have this big falling out uh frank leaves to you know go on his own and he gets bitten by infected and then he holds up in a house and he writes this letter to Bill. See, I never found these notes. Yeah, right? so... like I, I know Bill was. So so mm-hmm. I thought Frank was entirely new to the lore watching it, right? Yeah. And and that's kind of like in other talks I've seen it with. Mm-hmm. And I, I, yeah, I didn't, I never found those notes. Yeah, that's like I said, it's something... I'm all about like Easter eggs and shit. Yeah, like I said, something very easily to miss. And not only that, but uh, I mean, people that go back and play the game will pay more attention to this level with the success of that episode. But I mean, at least for me, when I first played that mission, it's not a very memorable kind of mission, you know, like, again, it just mainly serves the purpose of getting supplies. And then at the end of the mission, you get a truck, which lets you, you know, continue the journey. But uh, so again, you find Frank's body and uh, he hangs himself because he doesn't want to, you know, turn into an infected. And in the note that he leaves Bill, he's very bitter and they never reconcile with each other. And he says, like, you know, you're you're just stuck in your old ways. Like, I can't live like this anymore. And I just want you to know that I hate you like all this stuff. And it's also never explicitly said that they are uh, together, like romantically. It's it's heavily hinted at in the game. Uh, All Bill says is that they were partners he just says you know frank was my partner blah 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 and then later on ellie finds like a nudie mag in his truck and it's a a male nudie mag so you know he's uh gay but like i said it's never explicitly said that like they were romantically involved together so that's another just another layer of why I think everyone really loved the Frank and Bill episode because it's something that was, I guess you could say change, but in my mind, I don't really think it's a change. I think it's just a deeper look at a story we didn't have time to tell in the video game. Right, and, and that's, that's that's exactly what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's You do that in the video game and it, it makes them feel like a really emotional side character, mm-hmm. right? Doing yeah. it in, in a single episode like that makes it just feel so profound to the overall story. Yeah, and it was just, I mean, that episode is just, it's so good. I mean, just thematically, the visual shots of it, I mean, it is just it's so so good and i love again i guess you could say the one change if there is a change is that like i said bill and frank never have that falling out that they have in the video game and i you see like uh scenes of that in the show like in the show they have that argument about when uh frank is talking to uh joel and tess over the radio and he's like we don't need friends and blah 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 and like frank wants to you know let people in and meet people that's like what breaks them apart in the video game like that's like the crux of it so really? to see to see in the show that they acknowledge those issues but that you know their love was stronger than that and that you know the love that they had for each other uh diminished those problems i thought again like you could say that's a change but i think that's a much better change you know i think that makes it much better it like you said it's very easy to look over side characters especially in a video game and this just gave them so much more depth and not even just them as characters i think to me it gave the world of the last of us a lot more depth and i think 
you know, seeing two people trying to make it in this world that is dying, but they like they started their lives almost when the whole world ended, like everything else ended. But for Bill and Frank, that's when they could truly be themselves. And that's when they could truly live their life together. And I think the the theme of that is just very interesting. And it's just so beautiful. And yeah, it like I said, I can't talk about that episode enough. It was just so good. Uh, Nick Offerman, amazing. Uh, amazing. What I for, I forgive me, I forget his name. I feel like it's Murray something. But don't make uh, me lie to him. Yeah, it's M- something Murray. But the guy who plays Frank, who was also in White Lotus, he was great in that as well. But yeah, the fact that he could make the character of Frank, someone who we never even saw in the game, such a deep and like I said emotional character just in that one episode I mean shouts out like that's just such a great job as an actor I think yeah the whole cast was was really well really well done I I I I really enjoyed all of it um like like I was saying earlier you know with with Pedro and and Bella Bean and the lead with it I I you know it's uh I they've 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 really kind of just like captured everybody right their their interviews are, are kind of catching you know, Twitter by storm and TikTok mm-hmm. by storm and everybody's making the memes about like, you know, I, I, what it, what it's going to be like for her real dad to, to compete with having yeah. Pedro and that was like <laughs> celebrity dad. Right. It's a, uh, I yeah, do, man. I do got to say you brought up the interviews. I want to say this. I mean, no one's going to see this, but whoever out there that might see this, any interviewers out there, like people who, you know, do press and all that stuff, please, please, stop with the daddy meme questions for Pedro. Like, I mean, it was funny at first. And I mean, Pedro seems like he's a really cool guy too. So I don't think he really minds, but I mean, the man is an incredible actor. Like, I feel like every interview I see with him is like daddy meme jokes and just like questions about memes. But I just want to say for anyone that's out there watching, if you are in a position like that, ask the man some real questions, please. Like he's a legitimately great actor. So please ask him some real questions. I'm sorry. That was a little bit of a tangent, but I had to put that out there. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Like I said, ask him some real questions. The man's amazing. But speaking on that, Pedro Pascal, I mean, he's so good in, he's so good in everything, but especially as Joel. And I want to go back to a point that you made earlier when I first heard that he was announced as Joel, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was psyched because, like I said, he's just amazing in everything. But I won't lie when I say that when I first heard that, I'm like, Pedro, Joel? Okay. Like I said, I was 100% for it because I believed in him as an actor. But it definitely would not have been like if you, if you would have asked me two years ago, like who should play Joel Miller? I don't, I don't know if Pedro Pascal would have been on the top of my head. You know what I mean? No, and, same, same. Yeah, and that's, again, nothing against him or anything. I just don't know if that would have been my first pick. But, oh, my God, like, he is Joel. Like, he literally, he stepped into that role so well. And I think, so well. That, yeah, and I think that he really toes the line perfectly of, the mix of the character from the game that we remember, but also it being his own thing. You get what yeah, I mean? Does I that were, make sense? You and I were talking on this like like right before we started recording, right? And and how Neil told them both, don't play the game, right? If yeah. you can't be because he wanted them to come in reading the scripts, reading about the character and and having a fresh take on it. Mm-hmm. Right. It's it's it feels so much the same because it is the same character. But it's it's a different adaptation for a different format, right? Yeah. Neil wanted that emotion to come from a place from actors doing the acting of this format, and it's it's a uh, it it really paid off. Yeah, you know, I and on the flip, like Witcher, you know, I feel like a lot was successful because Henry Cavill was a huge fan of the games, mm-hmm. right? I and and I I you know it's a did different directors and and have different expectations of the cast, and I think in this in this particular adaptation, I think. I think asking him to not play it directly right before so they come in fresh really paid off. Yeah, I think it did for sure. And like we were talking about, I think it also, I feel some people might read that as like, oh, well, why wouldn't you let them play the game? Like, you know, that's stupid. 
But I don't know. We were talking about this, and I think it's the reason why. And I think I I think Neil uh, addressed this on one of the podcast episodes that they do. But uh, really, it really comes down to if Pedro were to play the game and or Bella to play the game, and then they're going to go and try and play these characters, there would there's no way that some part of their brain would not be trying to emulate like what they saw in the video game or the performances of the characters from the game. So right. for the Experience people, bias. exactly. So for the people that are making this show for Neil Druckmann and um, Craig Mazin, you know, for them, they want, they want, uh, they want Pedro and Bella to become Joel and Ellie. They don't want them to, you know, be, uh, doing interpretations of the you know actors before them so i think right. it really just comes down to like i said it, they didn't want that to uh influence their performances and again if they were to just play the whole game in preparation i think there's no way that again in the back of their head you know pedro wouldn't be doing an interpretation of troy baker's performance as joel you know what i mean and they wanted pedro's performance as joel you get what i mean no, so 100%. I think it's a smart move to not have them play the game. And like I said, really develop these characters as they would, you know what I mean? Without the bias of, you know, what came before. But that also reminds me, we're talking about these actors and stuff really quickly. I do want to give a major, major shout out to uh, Troy Baker, who played Joel in the video game. Right. And Ashley Johnson, who played Ellie in the video game. Both are amazing actors. Again, a lot of people look Thanks. over voice actors. And I will say not only are they voice actors, but they did the mocap for both Joel and Ellie in both the yeah. video games. And, you know, that's a whole other level of acting right there. So I just want to make sure we give them their flowers because they deserve all the praise and respect that they deserve. Thanks. And also, I think it goes back to our point that we were talking about of why it's so good is because they were both heavily involved with this show as well. Troy Baker was heavily involved with Pedro Pascal, you know, crafting the role of Joel. Uh, anyone out there who doesn't know, I mentioned it briefly, but they, uh, the HBO has a podcast for the last of us and mm -hmm. it's hosted by Troy Baker who played Joel and also has Neil Druckmann on there. Craig Mazin's on there. And he's talked about himself, how, not only how good Pedro is in the role of Joel, but he talks about too, like how Pedro was able to bring stuff to Joel that, you know, Troy never even thought about. And I forget what the scene was, but he mentions a specific scene. And he says like the way that Pedro reacted, like uh, his like facial reaction to what the character said, he watched it and was like, son of a bitch. Like, why didn't I think of that? You know what I mean? Like he like was watching the performance like thinking of his own performance and was like man like that was so good i wish i would have thought of that when we did the video game you know however many years later yeah i you know i i that's that's a hell of a compliment particularly coming from troy baker you know being mm -hmm. being a bit if, if you're a gamer at all these days it's almost impossible to the to, to to be a gamer if you've played any form of, of store a game with a with a really well wrote story where where troy baker's not in it right mm -hmm. in, in at least one game that you've played yeah um i you know i the the man is a hell of an actor i mm -hmm. he how hard he goes in his mocap performances and his voiceover work for his other stuff with it right i he he really made higgs in death stranding come to life mm -hmm. right i like as as a villain he encapsulated a lot of people like god he does villains so well and, and <laughs> heroes and great characters so well i just yeah. i I love Troy Baker. I yeah, the, he's the a man great. fantastic work. So it's it's I really think it's, it's a real testament when he praises Pedro's version of it, right? That like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, Pedro, Pedro did amazing. I do want to yeah. talk a little bit more about some of the changes that the show made. So yeah. uh, another big one that I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit before we get into the finale and some of the real juicy stuff is uh the cordyceps. And not only the, the cordyceps themselves, but how they transfer information. And not only that, but in the show, we get an explanation of how this infection started. In the game, we never get a clear cut, like, 
what happened. You're just kind of thrown in. You have the beginning level with Sarah, which plays right. out very similarly as the first episode does. But after that, you're just in this world. And I, again, right. going back to like the letters and stuff, I mean, I picked up a lot of that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to lie. I didn't do a complete 100% on the game. So there could be, you know, some kind of letter or something you can find in the game that maybe explains this more that I don't know about. But as far as I know, they don't give you an explanation in the game, again, as to right. how the infection really spread and what happened. So the fact that in the show, we get that whole breakdown from uh, Pedro about like, yeah, uh, it got into the flour and the corn, and then it got, you know, a lot of products used that kind of stuff. And then that right. stuff hit the shelves on Friday by Saturday, people started to get sick. Then by Sunday, you know, like a full step yep. by step. And I mean, that was just amazing to see again, not necessarily a change, just something more that we didn't get in the game. Yeah, it added to the lore. Exactly. And then also, like I mentioned before, the transferring of information between the cordyceps and like how that if you step on, you know, a thing of fungus or whatever here, it right. communicates to the infected like all the way over here. I think that is really, really cool and something that was not in the video game. Well, and I think part of that is right. We've we've a lot of of research and and stuff has gone into in the last 10 years what we've learned about funguses right right mm -hmm. if you're if you're a biology nerd of and, and environmental nerd at all i uh, new studies come out about different mushrooms what we learn about different fungi and and stuff all the time mm -hmm. um and and in the last 10 years we've really learned and solidified like how much mushrooms communicate together right like that yeah. Uh, and, and and how like a bunch of different trees are connected right will store water and, and your larger trees will help share water right in the mm -hmm. system we've learned a lot about plants and and it's a uh, yeah i think it i think it's really cool that that you know we we've learned more about plants in the last 10 years so it makes sense that neil might make some changes mm -hmm. in, in the show or, or additions to yeah. to the lore right in the show with it all i i think that's super cool mm -hmm. and i have heard too uh no there's no word yet on what this project is or what it will be we can talk about this a little bit more when we talk about what's next but uh neil Druckmann has said that whatever the next installation of last of us is that he wants to incorporate this the idea of the cordyceps being able to communicate with each other so nice. yeah so that's another example yeah. of not only is the game informing the show but now the show is informing on the game which i think is just so cool and again it just shows like having the people involved that need to be involved it helps everything and it makes everything better yeah it just comes full circle i dig that yeah absolutely but uh moving on a little bit so i want to really talk about i want to talk about the finale and uh, yep. I know that you haven't watched the finale, but, but I have... live in Nerdland. You so live I've, in Nerdland. I've got spoilers all day. You exactly. Know? Yeah, man. And also you've played the game. And so yep. the the ending is very much, you know, I want to say almost exactly the same as it is in the game. And so I want to kind of talk about it because obviously there's a lot of discussion to be had of how it ends. But first of all, I do want to mention before we get into that, we were just talking about Ashley Johnson, who played Ellie. So uh, Ellie in the video game, excuse me. But uh, so in this finale, the it opens up, we get a story that we never saw in the video game. And, it, and it's of Ellie's mother. And Ellie's mom is played by Ashley Johnson, which I think just like slam dunk move by Neil and Craig like to think of that just yeah, slam dunk and just the the death of symbolism to that you know having the person who played ellie in the video game and kind of birthed the character from nothing is now the mother of that character in this new adaptation and like physically yeah. giving birth to the character i just it's just so good and so smart it's a uh, man it's you know the I think a lot of people, you know, who who play the game be because of what you play at really, really, you know, relate to Joel in it. But the reality is what we've learned from Last of Us is a lot of it's Ellie's story. Oh, it's hundred percent right? Ellie's and, story. And, and it's a it's it's such a such a good shift 
in storytelling, right, in the mm-hmm. game, and very much in the show, right? We start out real heavy with with Joel, mm-hmm. right, from the first episode, and and there's that natural shift, and I think that's just it's it's fantastic icing on the cake, just to solidify that this is Ellie's story. Yeah, and not only is it Ellie's, it's definitely Ellie's story, but not only that, but uh, the the on the podcast they talk about this a lot, which I really think again, everyone go listen to it because it really gives much deeper depth into all of this stuff not only the tv show but the game as well but how they describe it which i think is really kind of shines a light on a lot of this stuff is the last of us is ultimately a love story and everything revolves around the concept of love and the concept that you know love is not always a good thing like we think of love as this you know it's this all-powerful thing that can trump everything but that that can also be bad And so we see that in many different forms throughout the show and in the video game. So obviously we have the love between a father and a daughter with Pedro and Bella, or I'm sorry, Joel and Ellie. Right. And and then we see, you know, with Bill and Frank, we see romantic love between, you know, two people. And then uh, with, uh, forgive me, I'm the names are blanking on me, but Sam, Sammy and uh, his brother that we meet in episode four, I want to say. That sounds right. Yeah. So uh, Mm -hmm. that obviously like sibling love, like what you would do for your sibling. And this all, I think comes all back around to with Ellie and her mother, you know, it's really, again, it's a story of Ellie, but it's also, again, the love that a mother has for her child and even in you know her unborn child and it shows that you know ellie was born with you know born in with love but also this deep violence as well and i think you know for people who have played part two and you know kind of know where the story goes we see glimpses of this in the show and in the game but you know that kind of darkness that ellie has and the kind of you know violent traits that she possesses it all comes full circle because like i said we find out in this episode we see that again she was born in just incredible violence like so for those of you who haven't seen it or you know don't know what i'm talking about uh ellie's mom yeah spoiler alert for everyone out there ellie's mom is pregnant obviously with ellie and she's being chased by an infected and she got uh bit by an infected and then she holds up in this house and she literally and then she just starts giving birth to Ellie while this infected is like banging on the door and all this stuff. She gives birth and then immediately as Ellie, you know, pops out, the infected bursts in the door and starts going at uh, Ashley Johnson, Ellie's mom. I forget what her name is. I want to say Anna maybe is her mom's name. I think so. Don't, but, uh, don't make me lie to you. It's yeah, what, a long weekend with, with camping. Yeah, well, whatever her name is, Infected's coming after her, and uh, she kills the Infected. While Ellie's, you know, on the ground, umbilical cord still attached. And this is where the kind of big bombshell of the episode comes. We learn that that's why Ellie is immune, is because her mother was bitten while the umbilical cord was still attached to her so she got just a portion of the kind of cordycep virus so that's why she's immune which is another thing that we never got in the video game in the video game it's again i think there's a letter that you can pick up from anna ellie's mom but it doesn't it doesn't say any of this it i forget what exactly it says i'll find it online and i'll post it up here for all you guys and you guys can read it nice but uh, if, you're, if you're listening somewhere on that, I, I will will post it on 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 the Sons of Mjolnir Twitter page. So, yep. so go check us out there. Uh, we'll get it to you. No matter what, we'll get it to you. But it does it does not say why she's immune or it doesn't you know specify any of this. So for all of us who have played both part one and part two, that has always been a huge question, which at the end, it doesn't really matter why she's immune. But it's something we still have always, you know, wondered, why is she the only person out there that is immune to this virus? And we finally get an answer to that. And like I said, the way that they did it, I think, was just it, it literally perfect. They couldn't have done it better. Right. No, it's a it's a it's it's excellent. It's um, 
God. I, I don't want to make the comparison to, to Resident Evil in some way. Um, right, B, but but there there there's some similarities and in, in ideals for immunity there. Absolutely, right. It's it's a zombie genre. I I but I man, I love it. I, yeah. I think it's it's such a nice it's great for the fans who played the games, who who've had that question of of why, right? Mm. Just just why, right? It's it's nice to get an answer to a question that feels like it belongs. Mm. I yeah. And like I said, at the end of the day. Uh, whether you watched the show or you know have played the video games that answer is not important it's not about ellie's immunity at you know really at all but like i said it's just still cool to finally have that answer and like again to bring ashley johnson in to play ellie's mom and to kind of tell this untold story i think is just so perfect and beautiful on so many levels and that's another thing too is uh neil Druckmann has said that this story is something that he has had written for a long time i actually was just listening to it they were originally going to do like an animated short of this with ellie's Mm -hmm. mom and kind of explain like what happened to her but it just kind of got scrapped and never saw the light of day and like neil just had this story sitting and just kind of his own explanation of what happened to Ellie's mom. And then when the show came about him and Craig Mazin, who's the other showrunner, uh, they were talking about this and Craig Mazin was like, Oh no, we're doing that. Like there's no way, there's no way we're doing the show and we're not including this story. So yeah. yeah, again, just another example of how, you know, changing the medium of the story allows for a lot more things that you might not have been able to do in the other iteration. You can, you know, add those things. And I think it just, it makes, again, makes everything better. No, it's fantastic. I love it. Oh yeah. But let's move on a little bit and let's talk about the ending. So this again, spoilers out there for everyone that has not finished the show and or finished the video game. But we are going to be talking about the ending right now. So the heartstring tugger. Yes, very, very tug on the heartstrings. But if you don't want to hear spoilers, either skip ahead. I'll put it in the description what time to skip ahead to or cover just catch ears, us next children. time. Yep, cover your ears. You. But so let's get into it. So the end of The Last of Us, it's the same in the video game and the show. So if you played it or watched it, you know, you get the gist of it. But basically, Ellie is taken by the Fireflies. Fireflies we were introduced to kind of throughout the show and throughout the game. They're kind of like a resistance sort of group, uh, you could say. I don't really know resistance is the right word, but they're just kind of like a club of people that, you know, chill out together. But they suppose they have this doctor, quote unquote doctor, right? And they supposedly can uh, derive a cure from Ellie. Because obviously she's immune. And so they take her. But then we find out that in order to get this cure, they're going to have to kill her. And Joel finds this out. And he's like, oh, no, 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 I don't think so. And basically, again, it's yep. Again, basically, it's the same in the game as in the show. But Joel just goes on a rampage through the hospital and just kills everybody just goes hallway to hallway taking people out and then until he gets to ellie and the doctors are there like about to operate on her and he just kills them kills every single one of them uh marlene is there as well who we haven't talked about uh yet on this episode but uh marlene we are introduced in the uh i think the first episode we're introduced to marlene yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, and First so uh, Marlene was, uh, she had Ellie in the beginning. That's where uh, Joel gets Ellie from. Like, that's how they meet and everything and kind of sets them on yep. her journey. And also Marlene was friends with Ellie's mother, like before all of this, the world went to shit. And so Marlene is with the Fireflies. So she is there as well. And her and Joel have this kind of uh, back and forth of you know marlene saying uh we could basically save the world you know the cure like she has the cure and like we you know we can help everybody and joel just says nope like 
I can't, I can't let you live because you're going to come after her and I can't have that. And boom, kills her too. Like I said, kills everybody and then saves Ellie, takes her out. And then he just doesn't say, he just is like, yeah, there was no cure. Like they lied and he doesn't tell Ellie what he did or what happened. And the show just kind of basically ends on that note. Like uh, Joel saves Ellie, but at what cost? You know what I mean? Right. And I really, I want to go into this because I think that it's such a great ending for so many different reasons. But I think it's one of those endings where you can really land on either side of it. And I want to get your thoughts on the ending, it's, both uh, in the game and in the show. You know, it's 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 it goes back to that whole old philosophy, right? Uh, is is would you trade one life to to save save a thousand? Right, and it's. I, I think that's the master class of the storytelling, right? Because if, if, if we're like logically like, oh yeah, absolutely, right? Mm-hmm. I, I you can save the world with one 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 person is do yeah. do it. And and then on the other hand, it's they do such a good job with storytelling that you feel like trash mm-hmm. for ever considering that as an option. Yeah. Right. Obviously Joel should should kill all these people, let Ellie live, and, and they should move on with their lives. Right. I I always wanted him in the game to 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 tell her what happened. Right. Mm-hmm. I was like I, I was always like she deserves to know. Right. Like like tell that girl how much she means to you and that you just couldn't let him do it when you found out. Right. Like I you love this girl like a daughter. Mm-hmm. I I just just have that moment, confess it all, pour it out. And I I really like, you know, they're just that that relationship with without having that moment to pour that out right is something that's that's conveyed deep mm-hmm. right that that's yeah. that's that's the emotion and the why and and it's a uh, they they do such a good job in the game and i'm so glad they got the right cast to to convey that emotion in that moment in the show mm-hmm. and i will say too uh what you just mentioned the whole the whole uh question of you know why did joel not tell ellie what happened uh, that is I, not to get into spoilers. I don't want to spoil uh, anything to come for anybody, but that's basically the kind of crux of everything that is to come. Like that, yeah. that one decision by Joel to not tell Ellie is, like I said, really the kind of the match that starts everything that we are, you know, that is to come for part two and in the part two video game. But right. going back to the finale and Joel's decision. So I, I mean, it's just so hard. It's one of those, it, that's why it's such a good ending. I think again, because you can go on either side of it and it's like both sides have really great points. You know, it's like on one hand you save the world, but <laughs> on the other hand, you know, that's his daughter. Like, I mean, it's not blood, but we see throughout the show, like that Ellie that's becomes different. Joel's daughter and we yeah. see, you know, in the beginning of Joel's journey, he's dealing with that immense grief and guilt over Sarah, his, you know, his right. actual daughter. And throughout the course of the show and in the video game, the relationship that evolves with Ellie, he's not going to lose that again under no. any circumstance, like no matter what. And Another thing that I want to bring up that a lot of people, I think, overlook, and especially if you haven't played the game, you really wouldn't know this. But even people who play the game, I think it's easy to overlook. Uh, Joel is not a good person. Like, we think of him as a good person because we play as him in the video game. But if you really think, like, Joel is not a hero character, per se. Like, before he was with Ellie, he killed a lot of people for not very good reasons. And right. so I think, you know, the ending with Joel, if I can give some defense to our boy a little bit, like I said, no one said he was a hero and no one ever said that he was a good person either. And like I said, with the situation he's put in, he is not going to, again, with Ellie, you know, being his kind of new daughter, if you would, again, he is not going to lose that and go back to that place where he was ever again. And it does not matter what is in his way, he will go through that. And I also want to say too, and on the defense of Joel, 
if you're a doctor or you know you're in a you know post apocalyptic apocalyptic situation and your doctor says that we have to kill the subject in order to get the cure that's i think that's a shitty plan to begin with like like yeah, think about right? it. yeah you have one person in the entire world that's immune and you're gonna kill that person on this off chance that you can make one vaccine and then make more from that like would it right. not would i'm i'm no biologist or you know anything like that but to me, it seems like you would want to keep that person alive in case that experiment does not work, right? So I think, you know, it's kind of a shitty plan as it is. But on the other hand, like we said, you, you save the world. I mean, that's a pretty big other hand, you know? Right. It's uh, it's it's huge, you know? And, and it's, it's, that's that's the thing is, is no parent would, would ever want to be put in that situation, hmm. right? And And it's, it's, the, the the way playing the game and watching a show make you make you empathize with Joe and, and feel what Joe feels, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's yeah, it's just it's just so well written. It's yeah. Just, and so I well think written. too, I do want to say from playing the game and watching the show, I think the show did a really incredible job at at showing the weight of what was going on and like the decision that Joel was making. Like as when to go back a little bit when I'm so when I played the game for the first time and I went through that mission again it's very much the same as in the show not once not once when I was playing that which I mean maybe this just kind of says more about me as a person but when I was playing that not once did I ever feel bad for those doctors or anything like and I think that kind of that kind of goes to the difference of experiencing something from a video game and then watching it on tv because like i said i played i mean who knows i you could probably look up how long it takes you to finish the game but you know 20 whatever plus hours i was joel like i you know was going through you know exploring killing clickers and all that and so when you get to the end of the game and they take ellie i was very much like Oh no, we're getting her. You know what I mean? And like, not Facts. once Facts. did I. Bring that girl yeah, home. exactly. And not once did I think about what I was actually doing. And it wasn't until the end when Ellie and Joel had that conversation. Not. It wasn't until then where I was like, "Hold on a second. What did I? What did I just do? Like, did I really just do the right thing? You know what I mean? Right. And I think the show did a really great job of since we're not in the same you know, we're not experiencing it as Joel, we're watching it, you know, from a third person perspective. I think the show did a really great job with, again, like adding that depth to that moment. And when I was watching Joel go through that hallway, it was very much more like, oh, shit, like, you know, what I mean, like, it was a lot more powerful. And a lot more, again, like that kind of question, like, I don't know if because at first, again, you're like, yeah, let's go get her. And then you see it happen. You're like, ooh, uh, I, maybe we should have thought about this a little bit more, you know? It's such a great ending. And you can go, it's, that's why it's so good. Because we, have, we can have these discussions on, you know, did Joel do the right thing? Did he not do the right thing? And blah, blah, blah. But that kind of all leads us into part two. And like I said, that question of did Joel do the right thing or, you know, did he do the wrong thing? That is what leads us to everything that is to come. And I don't want to spoil too much for anybody that's out there, but it has been confirmed already that we are getting a season two of the last of us, which will follow the second part of the video game. Which is and super cool. Amazing. And not only is that amazing, but something that I really think is awesome is that, uh, Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin have both uh, confirmed that while they are adapting the second video game, that doesn't mean that it's going to be just one season. So they didn't specify how many seasons we could get out of that. That's they, cool. Yeah, they did say that that doesn't mean that it's just going to be like just two seasons. Like they could get a couple seasons out of that, which I think is amazing. I oh, yeah. I, I love it so much. Give me 10, split it up into 10 seasons. I don't care. Like as long as we get more, that's what I, like, I'm here for it. It might be a little dramatic, but yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm here for it, bro. But yeah, oh. uh, so part two 
We're going to have everyone's returning. Uh, Pedro Pascal is coming back as Joel. Bella Ramsey will be back as uh, Ellie. And I will say again, not to get into spoilers, because I really, like I said about the the first game, like these stories are so good. Like I really want people to experience them for themselves. Like the experience that I had playing The Last of Us Part Two. Again, it's one of those things like I'm going to remember that for a long time. And I really yeah. think that, you know, YouTube videos and stuff, they don't really do it justice. So I, my opinion is I would say either play the game and experience it for yourself or wait for the show. Just, you know, wait for the show to come out and then experience it. Cause like I said, it is really good. And without getting too much into spoilers, Ellie, like you said before, Gorgon, you hit the nail on the head. This is Ellie's story. And yep. Part two exemplifies that better than ever. So I just can't wait to get more of that and to see what not only Bella uh, Ramsey does with the character, but how they craft this second season or multiple seasons. I just, I can't wait. I think it's just, it's so exciting. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I'm, I think fans are ready for Abby, right, at this point. I uh, fans, Dude, fans Abby. are so Woo, y'all ain't ready for Abby. Come on, let me tell you right now. It's, Let's uh, go. Okay. The internet, the internet will be in shambles when Abby comes, dude. That's fair. That's Absolute fair. Shambles. Well, and, and, you know, I, I I like that Neil Druckmann really enjoys expanding his story, right? We we were talking about this earlier, right? And and you kind of mentioned it just a second ago that that what we have going forward is where the story goes forward. Right. And in the way this is cross mediums and, and much like our last episode, Cyberpunk, this is also cross mediums with Dark Horse and the comics. Um, mm -hmm. in, in 2013, there was a four issue mini prequel comic um, wrote by Neil Druckmann uh, for for The Last of Us. I think it's called American Dreams mm -hmm. uh, on that, if I remember correctly. And it's uh, you guys should definitely check that out. I, I we are normally a comic book podcast. And this is one of our series that we're doing where we go over video games that have crossed over other IPs and particularly touch comics. Uh, so so pick it up, give it a shot. Let us guys know what you think of it, um, either on Twitter and the comics below. Uh, I, I Yeah, it's a uh, let, let us know what you guys think seeing, seeing a medium cross in, or, or one story cross into multiple mediums. Yeah, I mean, I need to pick it up. So I haven't read it either. I didn't even know it was a thing until we did this episode. So yeah, right? I'm 100% going to be hitting my comic shop to get it because I think we talked about this extensively, but, you know, this the story, not only is the story so good, but I think the world that they have crafted within The Last of Us is just so interesting and so well done that I am 100% for exploring every little corner of it like i want well, more did, of everything they did something so different for for how they do the zombie virus right mm -hmm. and, and and it stands out so much that that fans were were very like pulled up how how are the clickers gonna look how are the bloaters gonna look right and all this stuff mm -hmm. coming into it and i think we can all agree that they nailed it on the head like oh my god the oh, clickers look amazing the bloaters snapped. look amazing mm -hmm. i they're they're Weren't they nominated for some awards for for the VFX on it? I, if not, I'm not they sure. Be. I'll say, Lord. if not, they should be because yeah, the the clickers and every all the creatures and in, infected is the word I'm looking for. All yeah. looked amazing, and I do want to say too for everyone out there with the criticism of like, oh well, there was like it's a zombie show and there's barely any zombies, like blah blah blah. Again, you have to think about the differences between playing a video game and like watching a tv show and again yeah. when you're playing the game obviously you come into contact with a lot more infected because you're playing you know what i mean you, they have to make the gameplay engaging and interesting but when you translate that to a tv show it just in my opinion, I don't think that would work. Like imagine if in the show, it's literally like 20 minutes of Joel sneaking around corners and you know what I mean? Like trying to silently take down a clicker like that. That's going to get boring very quickly. You know, it's different yeah. when you're playing it yourself and you're experiencing it. It's a whole different thing watching it. So well, even watching The Walking Dead, right? Right. I know it came mm -hmm. from a comic, but but even even there. 
Right. It's uh some some of the the earlier episodes where they where they were like staking out something and it took a while to creep up, right? It's yeah. ended up for 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 when 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 we're telling people, you know, if you want to get into Walking Dead the show, right, we we kind of for the most part skip over a lot of that. Mm -hmm. We're like watch the beginning of this episode and the end of this episode, right? Yeah. And and the middle's just filler. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a... Uh, I, I think they made a really smart choice and in, in not trying to, to do too much of that and just focusing on the story. Yeah. Because it's it's the story that, that changed it's the story that really stood out to everybody when the game dropped. Mm -hmm. I think it was important to make sure that story is what stood out. Yeah. When and when I it would, got translated to this. Yeah. And I would argue that even in the game, like the infected are a backdrop almost. You know, yeah. it's not like, yes, they are there, and a lot of the game has to do with, you know, fighting them or getting past them. But like I said, in my opinion, it's not about the infected. The game has always been about Joel and Ellie and like that relate. And like I said, we touched on this before, like that concept of love and like what love looks like in this world that has died. <clears throat> so like I said, I think that's just kind of a silly criticism. I don't know. I, I just see that uh, being thrown out there a lot. And like I said, I just think it's kind of silly. I feel like that kind of covers everything until we get more for part two. You haven't played the game yet. And I, nope. again, I don't want to part two but before, before part two comes out that way I can be ready for it to go. So, yeah. So like I said, I don't want to, we don't want to get too much into all that stuff, but we highly, highly encourage all of you go play the game. Go if play you the haven't, game. Yeah, go play the game if you haven't already played the game. If you're some of our people on Xbox and can't access the game, then I'm sorry. I, I'm, yeah, first of all, I'm very sorry for you. And secondly, I would recommend uh, wait for the show. Like I said, you can watch wait YouTube videos and you can, you know, look up what the story is and all that. But I genuinely think, like I said, the story is so good. Like it's something you want to experience for yourself. And like I said, yeah. so if you really can't wait, you can find that stuff. But I really encourage you all to play the game or like I said, uh, wait for the show to come out. Also, I want everyone out there, if you guys love The Last of Us and loved hearing us talk about it, go check out the HBO podcast for The Last of Us. They have an episode for each episode of the show. And like I said, it is hosted by Troy Baker, who played Joel Miller in the game, Neil Druckmann, who is the writer, and then Craig Mazin, who is the, uh, the other showrunner, who also did Chernobyl, <clears throat> which, by the way, Chernobyl is also Incredible. amazing. Incredible. But yeah, the podcast is just so good. And to hear the way they crafted the story and like the changes that they made from the people who created all of this, it just is really a great listen. And like I said, if you guys are fans of this stuff, go check that out. It'll give you just such a deeper understanding of all these kind of themes and a lot of the stuff that we've talked about here. But and if you like listening to this talk today, please, please leave a comment below, like this video, subscribe, follow us anywhere, everywhere. Uh, you can find us at Sons of Mjolnir. Um, and that's on Twitter. That's on YouTube. That's where wherever you listen to podcasts currently and you're hearing us in your earballs. Uh, that's that's us everywhere. So just uh, show us a little bit of love and and we'll we'll keep making these these videos and these little podcasts for you guys to listen to us talk about comics and video games and our favorite shows and general nerddom. Yeah, whatever the hell else you want. We love talking about everything. And like Gorgon said, please leave us some comments. We will read them. You, you know, if, if it's just, hey, this is awesome, you have questions, please leave us some comments. We love to talk about this stuff. We will talk about it on an episode. We can even make a whole episode just on comments. But like I said, we love to engage with you guys and, you know, engaging with you guys just makes everything better. So like Gorgon said, please consider leaving us a comment, something we can discuss because we absolutely love it. But on that note, I think that we are going to have to get out of here for now. But we will be back with some more episodes coming at you guys. We have a lot of great things on our schedule. But for now, that's going to be it for us. As always, I am Fat Thor. I'm Gorgon. And we will see you guys all next time. May all your stacks be fat and stay hydrated out there, everybody. Stay hydrated. Stay jazzed. Keep moving. Maybe this all day.